to let you know a little bit about Trish and I, we really are first cousins and we have a passion for crafting. We love to share our craft videos with you, chatting and hanging out with you on lives and meeting new people at craft shows. Thank you so much for stopping by our channel today. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're returning, Trish and I thank you so much. Today we have a special video for you. It is a compilation of some of our favorite pink decor DIYs that we're sure the girl who is synonymous with pink at this time would love in her Barbie dream house. So grab your favorite beverage, prop up your feet, because this is a long one. You may have to come back in two different parts to see it all. Now, let's craft y'all. Hey y'all, this is Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using a 12 inch wood round. I ordered mine on Amazon because they're a little thicker than the ones at the Dollar Tree. And the ones at the Dollar Tree have holes in the top. Plus, this one was cheaper. I'm also going to be using this hot pink fabric. It is a fat square that I got at Walmart. It was about $1.47. I have this silhouette that I cut out on my Cricut Joy. You could also print something on your printer and paint it in on the piece or trace it onto the back of some vinyl and cut it out. There are lots of ways you could do it. I didn't have a printer here because I'm still in temporary housing. I'm going to be using this ribbon rosette piece that I got at Walmart. It was $2.47, but it's a nice size and great quality. I'm going to be using some Waverly chalk paint in the colors white and ink, and finally some Mod Podge and my hot glue gun. So the first thing I did was draw a line four and three quarters inches from the bottom. And then I drew a guideline down the middle just to see where the middle of the piece is. But later I will have to redraw that line. Now I'm just going to take masking tape. And first of all, I'm going to tape off the line at the top so that we don't have any paint bleeding under. And yes, blue painter's tape would have been better. You could have seen it so much better, but I didn't have any here at my temporary housing. But I'm going to place two good coats of white Waverly chalk paint here at the bottom. And now I'm going to redraw that line to divide the bottom part, and I'm going to take my masking tape, and this is the good part about the masking tape. I can see through it, and I'm going to split the difference on each side because the masking tape is approximately an inch wide. And then I just come in to the right and the left of that piece of masking tape, and then I'll remove the masking tape in the middle. And then I'll just use it as my pattern to each side, place another piece down, remove the one that we started with, and it has a line on it, so I know exactly where it came from. So I'm going to be taping off stripes all the way across the bottom of this piece. And before I come in and paint those stripes black, I'm going to use my white Waverly chalk paint and paint down each side of the tape. This extra time makes a big difference when you're preparing your board so that you don't have a ton of touch up when you finish. It will keep the black paint from seeping under the tape. And now I just come in with the Waverly chalk paint in the color ink, and I'm going to give it a good coat all the way across. I will use my dryer to dry everything. And then what I'm going to do is give it a second coat, and then it will have a nice matte black finish. And here comes the fun and best part, removing all of that tape. And as you can see, our lines stay pretty much crisp and we don't have a lot of touch up that we have to do on this piece. The next thing we're going to do is use a little Mod Podge here at the top. We're going to get as much of an even coat as we can. I did pour out way too much, but I eventually evened it out so that we can place down our fabric and smooth it down. This fabric has a lot of give in it, a lot of stretch, so you want to make sure you smooth out all of those wrinkles. It's not even necessary to iron it ahead of time. But once we have it down good, I only let it dry for about five minutes. And then I'm going to come in with a coat of Mod Podge on the top also. And after I do this, I'm going to let it dry overnight. Now we'll just come in with our utility knife and I'm just going to cut around the edges. Make sure you use a mat under it so you don't cut your table. And now it's time to place down this little silhouette that I cut with my Cricut Joy. Again, you, you do not have to have a cutting machine to do this, but we'll smooth everything down and use our transfer tape, peel everything off so that we can place it down and smooth it down to our wood round. 
As I was doing this, I was thinking about my very first Barbie that I remember getting. She was called Malibu Barbie. Do you remember the first Barbie you ever got? And now I'm just going to attach our little rosette kind of at the base of her neck here to break everything up. Later, I'm going to come back and add an initial to personalize this for the person I made it for on the left. There are lots of options. I'm going to be using a wooden letter or you could leave it just like it is. The last thing I need is a hanger. I'm going to be using a soda can tab. We'll bend it in the middle, mark our center on the back, turn it over and place it on with hot glue. And that's pretty much it for this project. I think even Barbie would approve. This is still one of my favorite projects and I'm going to be using a lot of clothespins that I got from the Dollar General. I'm also going to be using one of these wreath forms that I got at the Dollar Tree. Some adhesive back sheet moss. Some lamb's ear. I got mine at Hobby Lobby when it was 50% off. Some ranunculus flowers. I got mine at Hobby Lobby. They were on sale, but I really wanted a purple color, but this was the only color I could get at my store. I will also be using a little of this eucalyptus as well some petroleum jelly, some watered down white Waverly chalk paint, some wood craft sticks, one chenille stem to make a hanger, my two inch bench top cutoff saw that I got at Harbor Freight, and finally a scrap piece of lumber and my hammer. The first thing I'm going to do is take my scrap piece of wood and my hammer and I'm going to lay my wreath form down on the block and I'm going to pound down my wreath form. I'm going to mainly hit those crossbars in the middle and I'm just going to flatten out this wreath some. And yes, some of the wires did come loose, but it really doesn't matter in the end and you'll see why in just a few moments. I am going to be covering this entire frame with this adhesive back sheet moss. But the first thing I want to do is take my chenille stem, find what will be the top of my wreath form, and I'm going to twist down a chenille stem into a loop here on the back. And that's how we'll hang our wreath later. It's very important to do this before all of this sheet moss is stuck down. And now I'm going to cover this entire frame in sheet moss. I'm going to try and keep it as equal as possible to keep the round shape of my wreath form. I'll just go in and fill in any holes with small cut pieces later. Because sheet moss is very forgiving, you won't even notice where the lines are. On the back of my wreath, I'm going to put down some of these wood craft sticks and that will just give a little more weight to my wreath. It will take care of some of the stickiness and it will also protect my door when I hang the wreath. The next thing I'm going to do is take these clothespins and I'm going to break them apart, take off the springs because we will be using one side at a time, the smooth side. I used just a little less than 50. And now it's time to glue down our clothespins to the wreath form. I'm just going to use hot glue and I'm going to try and keep my lines as even and straight as possible. And I did use my table saw and cut off several small pieces to go at the ends here. And then later I learned to put some of the small pieces at the beginning and then my larger pieces. As you go down towards the middle there, one whole clothespin will actually do it, and that worked out really nicely. I'm only going to cover about two-thirds of the wreath, maybe a little less, with these wooden clothespins. And I'm using them smooth side up. To further remove most of the stickiness on the back of my wreath, I'm going to apply baby powder, just spread it around and smooth it in, and that will actually remove all of the sticky residue that is left. Before I paint my wooden clothespins and my wreath, I'm going to put down a good layer 
of petroleum jelly all across the wooden clothespins. That will just give my paint a different dimension and look very weathered and old. And now I'm going to paint my clothespins with this watered down white Waverly chalk paint. And you'll see in a few moments, I also paint on the green moss as well. If you don't like it and it's too heavy in areas, you can just wipe it off and put a little more on in other areas. I wanted to make sure that it looked weathered and old and chippy. And it did turn out to be quite cute. And you want to give this some time to dry before you move on to the next step. I do love these ranunculus so much. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And I'm going to start right in the middle of the greenery. And I'm going to lay down some of the leaves from the ranunculus bunch. And then I'll put one of the larger flowers right in the center. Then I'm going to put two of the medium sized flowers towards the end on each side. And now I'm just going to fill in with leaves from my ranunculus, my eucalyptus, and my lamb's ear. And the hardest part about this process is knowing when to quit. I love all of these elements that are so soft all together. This is one of my favorite wreaths I've ever made. And here it is on my wall. Oh, I love this one so much, y'all. Hey y'all, it's Kay. Today I'm going to be making a gnome and I'm going to use one of these floral cones that I got at Hobby Lobby. And I'm also going to be using one of these dowels. It is 36 inches long and 5 8 inch diameter. Two of these pink shoes, I got mine at the Dollar Tree. Some felt, some plaster of Paris. It doesn't take very much some Waverly chalk paint in the colors Ballet Slipper and White, some 3 quarter inch painter's tape, white velvet yarn, 3 8 inch pink ribbon, one of these small Christmas balls that I got at the Dollar Tree, this faux fur ribbon, a pair of these pink fuzzy socks I got mine at the Dollar Tree, one of these pom-poms that I got at Hobby Lobby, a couple of these roses from this floral pick, a bit of this fiber fill. I'm going to use this pink fuzzy fabric to make the hat for my gnome. And finally, just a small piece of this pink fleece fabric. I'm going to measure down 10 inches on my dowel, and then I'm going to put it in my two inch bench top saw that I got from Harbor Freight, and I'm going to cut it. I cut through about half of my dowel and then I flip it over and then I cut the other half. And then I'm taking my utility knife and I'm going to whittle down, for lack of a better term, the edges of both of my pieces. I want it to have a smaller edge that I'm going to push into my styrofoam. This takes a little while so I went off camera and finished. And now I'm going to give both dowels a good coat of white plaster chalk paint. Now I'm taking my painter's tape and I'm going to place one width and then a second row. And then after I put on my third row, I'll go back and remove the one in between. And I'll do this all the way down. That keeps my spacing pretty close to perfect. And I'm going back with my white paint and I'm going to paint the edges of my tape. And now I'm coming in with the ballet slipper pink and I'm going to paint in between all of the tape pieces. And now I'm taking this ballet slipper pink paint and I'm going to paint the shoes that I got from the Dollar Tree. And now I'm removing the tape from my legs of my gnome and I had absolutely no touch up to do. And now I'm going to take some plaster of Paris. It's just a two to one ratio, two times plaster of Paris and one of water. Give it a good stir 
and it sets up rather quickly. I'm going to fill my shoes about half full. You want to tap them down and get out all the air bubbles. And then you'll just stand your legs in there and let it dry for a few hours. The first thing I'm going to do is remove all of the packaging and then I'm going to take one of the socks and pull it over the entire styrofoam cone. With the type fabric it was, that was really the only way to do it. And now I'm measuring out some of my yarn, three pieces, that I'm going to use for her hair. And I'm just clipping it on this cutting board that I have. And that'll just keep it in place more easily so I can braid both pieces. I did end up making mine way too long, so you can shorten it when you make your known. You won't need it quite this long. But I thought it was better to make it too long than too short. I did end up gluing the top pieces together before I glue them to my gnome. Now I'm taking my second sock and I just cut it off at the heel and trimmed it up. And then I'm cutting right down the center and that's how I'm going to make my two arms. And then I'm putting a little glue on the edge turning right sides together and just gluing them down. And now I'm taking my fiber fill and I'm just cutting it about the width of my arm. And then I'll roll it, kind of like a sausage, cut it off, and that's how I'll stuff the arm. I sketched out a little mitten on some paper and cut it out. And now I'm just tracing it onto my felt and I'm going to cut out two at a time to be the hands for my gnome. Turning it over, placing the two sides together, I'm going to put down some glue, and then I'll take them and stuff them right in the end of my arm there, just with a little hot glue, and pull it down onto the mitten. And then there's two. I cut a piece of my fabric in a triangle to make the hat for my gnome. But first I'm going to go in with a little glue on the side of my cone and cinch up that fabric more tightly and just cut off the excess. And now I'm coming in with my triangle and I'm just going to glue right sides together. You could also sew this if you would like. And then I turn it out and it's looking like a hat. I'll just need to trim it up a bit. And I'm placing it again on that cutting board and then taking some of that faux fur trim, I'm going to trim out the edge of my hat. This made it so easy, so the glue didn't seep through in the wrong places. And now we'll glue a pom-pom on top while I have it here. I took one of those gold balls and ornament, cut off that little shank part, and then I painted it with that plaster chalk paint and I'm going to put it right down on my cone. And then I start attaching my arms to each side, making sure that the thumbs point to the front. And then I'm coming in with her braids and I just decide where I want it to fall at the bottom. And I decided not to cut them off just to put them straight across the top because my hat needs to be stuffed anyway. And then I come in first of all with my hat around her nose because you want it tight around the nose and then just work your way around the body gluing it down. I took some more of that fleece fiber fill and I'm going to stuff it up in her hat. I now want to make her a skirt. I'm just using some of this pink fleece and some of this faux fur trim and I just laid down a piece that would fit around her waist. And then I put a little more glue down and turn it over so it will have a nice finished edge. Then I start putting in the feet. You want to first make kind of a hole in the bottom and then cut your sock and then just keep pushing it in till you get it just right and she will stand. Just like that. I did decide her skirt was too long, so I'm going to go back and cut it at six inches. And now I'm just going to attach it to itself in the back and pull it snug. 
and then I take a few roses and apply one to her hat and one to her waistband as well. And that just dresses her up a bit more. I may come back later and add even more embellishments. And there's her shirt close up. And there she stands. I think she's rather cute. So my plan for this project is for it to look vintage, Victorian, shabby chic, if you will. And I think it would be part of a beautiful door decor, like a big swag around a door with lots of pink and greenery. But first of all, I'm going to start by painting the outside edge in that gold metallic paint. And then I'm going just to trace around the top part of my ornament so that I can make an ornament cap later. And once I've cut that out, I decided I would draw some scallops at the bottom and then cut out that pattern as well. And the next thing I'm going to do is just trace that pattern out onto this cookie tin sheet and then I'll just cut it out and that's going to be my ornament cap eventually. Now I'm going to take my ruler and draw a line down the middle of my ornament because I'm going to do a different technique on the top of my ornament than the bottom of my ornament. I didn't divide it exactly in half. I wanted the bottom part to be less than half. And now I'm just going to take my scrapbook paper and use a little washi tape, tape it down to my ornament so that I know it will be exactly the way I want it and I turn it over on the back and I'm just gonna trace that out with a pencil and then come back and cut it out. The next thing I want to do is take my ivory chalk paint and I'm going to paint all of this bottom part in the ivory chalk paint. It only took about one coat. It had really good coverage. And this is also the point that I go in and paint our little cap for the top of my ornament in gold metallic paint. This took at least two coats, so you might want to paint it with chalk paint first and then the gold, but that's totally up to you. The next thing I'm going to do is take my ruler, and I'm just using the width of this ruler. It came from the Dollar Tree, by the way, and I'm going to draw stripes on the bottom of my ornament. And I started in the center so they would be perfectly spaced out on each side. And now what I'm going to do is start painting the pink. I'm going to start in the center. I didn't like painting it freestyle, so I went in with a little washi tape and applied it to each side of my stripes. And so I'm just going to paint every other stripe in the ballet slipper pink. And y'all, I apologize for my voice. I have been really sick the last two weeks and I can't seem to get it back. Washi tape is a little more expensive, but I really like using it because I don't have to worry about any of the paint bleeding under or it pulling off the next color. What it really is, is a big time saver. I'm going to use Mod Podge to apply my scrapbook paper to the top of my ornament. But before I apply it down, I'm going to use a little water and spritz the back of it and then smooth it down into place and let it dry. This is really thick paper and it helps it to adhere better and more quickly. To break up that harsh line in the middle where the two mediums meet, I'm going to use some of this lace, just cut off a section and come back and glue it down using my Fabri-Tac. And we'll just trim up those edges once the glue is dry. Now I'm going to attach my paper roses, three of them, and I'm just going to center them right in the middle of, the, of my lace and in the middle of where those three large pink stripes are. And the next thing we need to do is attach our flat back pearls. I'm using some of the larger ones in between my roses, and then I'll finish up on the ends with a smaller one. And now I'll just attach the ornament cap to the top, just using a little hot glue and placing it down. Now I'm going to make a bow for the top of my ornament. I'm just going to use this beautiful ribbon that I got in the Christmas section at Hobby Lobby. And I'm going to make three inch loops, two on each side. And then I'll do a smaller loop in the middle so that I can hide the chenille stem I'm going to use to cinch my bow tight. And I started out with six inch tails on this bow, but I do come back later and trim it up to fit my actual ornament. I'll just use that chenille stem and twist it right around the middle. You don't need the whole thing because we're just using it to hold the bow. But I am going to use the rest of it to make a hanger for our ornament. 
Now I'm trimming off that excess. Use a little hot glue and attach it right to the top of my ornament. And now I'm going to take the excess of that chenille stem and I'm just going to use a little hot glue, twist it on the back. You could staple it if you have some small staples that won't go through. But I'm going to use a little paper tape right on top of the glue to make sure it holds really well and stays in place. And this is the way I'm going to attach it to the swag I'm going to make later to go around my door. We want to invite you to come with us on a crafty cruise getaway with four other YouTube channels. You can enjoy beaches and sand and all of the onboard ship amenities and spend time with six different YouTube crafters in classes curated just for you. It is going to be a blast, but space is very limited and it is going quickly. Make sure you go to the website www.craftycruisegetaway.com for all of the information. There will also be a link in the description box below. Can't wait to meet you there. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to be using one of these tinsel trees that I picked up from the Dollar Tree, a pink feather boa that I got from Hobby Lobby, one of these little Christmas tree toppers from Hobby Lobby, some small ornaments from Hobby Lobby, one of these microfiber cloths from the Dollar Tree, my glue gun and some glue sticks, and some tools from my work caddy. The first thing that I did was remove the tinsel because all I want from this is just that frame. Now I want to cover my frame, so I took my microfiber cloth and I wrapped it around the frame. I just put it in the corner there and wrapped it around and then I trimmed it off. Now I'm going to use some hot glue and just attach this to the frame. This is going to give me a good base, and that way whenever I start wrapping it, I know that none of that green is going to show through. Plus, I just like how it makes it a little bit soft and fuzzy. You could totally use one of the paper cones that you can get from like Hobby Lobby, but I just like the size of this one. Now that we have this covered, we're going to take our feather boa and use a little bit of hot glue and we're going to attach it all the way around our tree. Now I did try to make sure that I pushed my feathers down as I started building up so that everything would be going in the same direction. I used hot glue all the way around this on that very bottom layer, but once I start going up, I just wrap a little bit and then I'll put a drop of glue and I wrap a little bit more. I didn't have it all the way around. It really didn't need it. Once I started getting close to the top, I took my little tree topper out of the package and stuck it down on top. I wanted to make sure that it was there and that I covered it with my feathers so that the wire wasn't showing on top of my feathers. All this stuff is 50% off at Hobby Lobby. I even used a 40% off coupon for the BOA and ended up paying less than $2 for it. Now that I have everything wrapped, I'm just taking my scissors and giving it a little bit of a haircut. I'm trimming down so that it lays better and looks more like a tree. Now I'm going to take these little snowflake ornaments that I got from the miniature tree section at Hobby Lobby and I put all of these little strings in the top and tie them off. I thought that I was just going to glue these down without them, but I actually liked it better with the little strings. Then I just kind of move my feathers out of the way, put a drop of glue, and glue my strings down to it, and it lets my ornaments hang on top of my feathers. There's not a lot of these, I just wanted the hint of them, just to give it a little bit of extra interest. And there's our tree. Y'all, I am so in love with this tree. I love pink, Kay loves pink, and this is just so us. I love the frilly girly aspect of it. This would be perfect in a little girl's room, or I'm going to have it in my office. <laughs> Thank you. 
I thought we would make a fun little flower pot person. So the first thing I want to do is paint them. I have this Waverly pink chalk paint. It says it is ballet slipper pink that I'm going to use. I'm going to paint this whole one pink and then this brim of this one pink. For two of these, I'm going to paint the top part pink. And then for the other two, I'm going to paint the bottom part pink. For these two that are going to be the legs, the bottom part is going to be the shoes and they're going to be pink. And then for these two that's going to be the arms, the top part is going to be the, the sleeve of the dress. So it's going to be pink and I'm going to leave this part the natural color. Our flower pots are dry. I really like this little shade of pink. I think it turned out really pretty. So there's our two arms, our two feet. This is going to be the head of our pot. I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to draw a face onto the front of it. Okay, so there's our little face. Now I'm going to use a marker and fill it in. For the eyes, I'm going to use my Waverly Ivory Paint and I'm going to paint in the eyes and then I'll go in and fill in the black. My pots are dry, my face is painted. Now I think I'm going to add a little bit of decorations to my pot. I have this cute little pink and white ribbon and I think it would look adorable at the bottom of her dress. So I'm going to put some glue on it and attach it to her dress. Now I have my ribbon on. I think that gave it just the perfect little touch. I did end up using Aline's Tacky Glue to put it on with. I didn't have very much luck with the hot glue. It kept wanting to come back off. Now for the sleeves and for the shoes, I think I want to add a little something to them as well. So I have this little lace here and I think I'm going to run it right around the edge at the bottom of the sleeve and then right around the top like a pair of socks above the shoes. So let's glue that on and we'll be right back. All of our pieces are dry. I have my ribbon on my dress. I have the lace around the sleeves and around the top of the shoes. So now we're going to put this together. The first thing I need to do is take my twine and run it through the sleeves because I need to put them in between before I attach my two pots together. So I put a small piece of tape at the end of it to help that. Now I'm just going to thread my twine through one side and then back down through the other. When I pull it through this one, I'm going to tie a double knot in the end of it and trim that off. And now it's going to hang like that. So I need to measure across and now cut our other piece of twine right about there. And we're going to tie a double knot in it as well. That's how your arms are going to look when you get both sides tied in. Now we're going to drape them over the body of our pot and figure out exactly where they're going to go and then put a little dab of glue to hold them in. Okay. Now we're going to take our head and we're going to glue it straight on top just like that. Now I'm going to make my legs. I want them to dangle off the side of the table, so I'm going to measure. I think I'm going to cut about that much because I can always take it up from the inside. So we're going to cut two pieces and we're going to thread them down into our pot and then tie a knot just like we did with the arms. And there's our legs. Now we're going to attach them to the inside we're going to glue them just inside of our, the bottom pot. Okay, so there's our flower pot girl. I really like how she turned out, but I think I'm going to put 
a necklace on her. I have all these beads that I've had for several years now. I think they were actually my mother-in-law's. I am going to put some right around her neck and give her a little necklace. And now she's finished. I'm going to go put a plant in her and set her up and then we will have a look at her all together. Hey y'all, it's Kay. For today's project, I'm going to be using a pizza pan from the Dollar Tree, some vinyl that I got at Hobby Lobby when it was 50% off, this 4x6 package of paper that I got at Hobby Lobby, just a few sheets I will need, some ribbon, just some light pink from my stash, some adhesive magnetic buttons, I'm going to use one of my hole punches, some gemstones from the Dollar Tree, some gel Gorilla Super Glue, a few tools, some cable ties that I had in my stash, some gemstones that I got from Hobby Lobby when they were 50% off. They come in four sizes in this one container. And then I'll need some E6000. First, I'm selecting four sheets from my paper pad. I'm going to take some gemstones and select four of the best looking in the bag I could find. I'm going to use my hole punch, although it's not the exact size because these stones vary so much in size. But I'm selecting areas on my paper that I think are going to be pretty for my magnets. Just using Mod Podge, I will apply the scrapbook paper to the back of the gemstones. I just center it on what I think is the cutest on my paper. This is a fun project that you could get anyone involved with at any age. This could be a great project for girls going off to college. And now I'm going to take a circle that is 11 and a half inches, which is the diameter of the center of the pizza pan. You could use a plate or whatever you have to cut the circle. If you have a cutting machine, you could use that. And now I'm just taking my scissors and I'm going to cut out my vinyl circle. You could use scrapbook paper and Mod Podge I just wanted it to be a little faster. And then I'm putting it down slowly on my pizza pan. I want to make sure I have as few bubbles as possible. And so I'll use my scraper and slowly work my way across the pan. I'm pretty meticulous about these kinds of things. Are you a meticulous crafter? Well, now I'm taking my tape cable ties and I'm going to apply them to the back of my pizza pan. These will help hold on the ribbon that will hang my magnetic board to the wall. This is going in my new studio. I use a little of that adhesive on the back, the Gorilla Glue, just to make sure it stays nice and tight. Now I'm just looking at what size I want to use, trimming up those edges so it goes in easily through my cable ties, and tying a couple of knots. I love cable ties. I got mine on Amazon and I have used them for so many things, especially in making wreaths. And now I'm going to decorate the edge of my pizza pan, excuse me, memo board. I'm using the largest pearl that was in my little bucket and the second largest. And I'm just staggering them, larger stone, neck size, around the pizza pan. I start out applying just a stream of glue on the edge, but I end up taking a popsicle stick and just applying it right to the center 
of each flat back purl. It just made less of a mess that way, and it seemed to use less glue, honestly. And I just worked my way around the pan. I'm a pearls and pink kind of girl. And now I'm trimming up those magnets with my detail scissors. And I'm going to apply a coat of Mod Podge to the back to seal the paper. And after I do that, well, I just peel off the sticky back from the magnets and stick them to my gems. I had a bow in my stash, really simple, tied with a zip tie in the center. And I'm going to use that at the top of my pan. Just place a little hot glue and a little Gorilla Glue helps too. And I placed a little rose right in the center for my stash. And there it hangs. I love my new memo board. I think it would be a great addition to a dorm room or a studio or craft room. It's Kay. For today's project, I'm going to be making this floral door decor. You know us Southerners, we love our monograms. And the star of this project is this can of spray foam insulation. That's right, we're taking this back to 2008. We're going old school and cheap. I'll need a piece of foam board. I got mine at the Dollar Tree and we'll use about half. Some poster board. Some paper tape. I'm going to use these peonies and hydrangeas. They came in a grab bag box at Michael's. These white flowers that I got from Walmart and they were 97 cents a bunch. Some pink ranunculus. I think I got mine at Hobby Lobby. And finally, I used some of these dahlias that I got at Walmart. The first thing you want to do is sketch out the letter that you're going to be making. I am making the letter of my last name, which is an S, and I just sketched it out first with a pencil, and now I'm darkening the lines with my Jot Permanent Marker that I got at the Dollar Tree. Now I want to cut out my letter and I'm going to use a Zacto knife. Take some advice from me and make sure you get a fresh blade and it will go a lot better, I promise you. To make the sides of my S, I'm going to take the shorter end of my poster board and I'm going to draw a line at two inches. Then I'm going to draw another line at the three inch mark. And then I'll just cut out the strips at the three inch line. It will take approximately four for this project. Now I'm going in with my ruler again and a scoring tool, and I'm going to score on the line so that it will be easier to fold this line. You just want to get it deep enough that the cardboard bends easily. Then I'm just going to fold my cardboard on the line that we've drawn and burnish it down with my scraping tool so that we have a nice crisp line. Then I'm coming in with some scissors and I'm going to make cuts all across this line. It doesn't matter if they're a half inch, five eighths inch, just whatever. You can just eyeball it and you can always go back and add some more if you need to. But you want to do this to all your strips. Now I'm going to go in with the painstaking process and I'm going to tape it to my foam board S. We're making like a trough on the side. I used a combination of this paper tape and some hot glue you will see me come in with and I just manhandled it until I got it done. Don't worry, I'm not going to show you every step of this, but I am going to show you a little bit on each side there. And sometimes I had to cut the strips a little shorter because it made it easier to go into those smaller curvy areas. And yes, you could buy one of those paper mache letters at Hobby Lobby and cut out the top. But guys, those things are $8 each. And I just couldn't see doing that. So I wanted to come up with a less expensive way to do this. As of now, I have about a dollar in this project. So I'm just going in, like I said, more tape, more glue, 
and I eventually get the entire letter covered. And there it is. You can see all of the side walls are put on. So we have a two inch margin all the way around. Now I'm going in with a little hot glue and I'm just going to seal the edges all around my letter. This just gives it a little more security for the next step. I've lined my table with a black garbage bag and I've got that spray foam and I'm going to put it into the S and you want to put in about an inch. Honestly, it's kind of difficult to control it and it won't matter anyway because if it goes too far above the S when it dries, you just trim that part off. But this is the fun part. And it took about half a can, I think, to do my entire letter. I let the foam insulation dry overnight. I finished up about 9.30 that night and by eight o'clock the next morning, it was completely dry and ready to go. I'm going to come in and level the top. I just use a serrated knife and I'm going to cut it level with the sides of my cardboard. It was not difficult at all. It just sliced right off like butter. It made me think of when you level a cake so that you can ice it. To make a hanger for my letter, I'm going to use a piece of twine and just tie it in a knot Use a little hot glue on the back, and once it sets up, I'll put some more hot glue on top and also a piece of tape. When I'm working with florals, I like to push the leaves down to the bloom and then cut off the length that I need. I actually measured the first one because I wanted to cut all of my florals at approximately an inch and a half. And now it's just a matter of poking posies. These three bright pink peonies are kind of the star of the show, so I'm going to start placing them in first. And then I decide I'll wait on the middle one until I put in just a little bit more color. Then I went in second with the hydrangeas. They're a lighter color, but they're still kind of a big, full flower. My plan was to use the larger flowers first and then finish it off at the end with the smaller white flowers. And now you can see I finally put in that peony. And at the end, right before I hang it on the door, I'm going to pull apart those areas where it comes too close together and even trim up the leaves if I need to with my scissors. And sometimes I just tuck them in. But I think it really does turn out cute in the end. I've always wanted one of these, but I didn't want to pay the price that I saw. And now it's coming together. I could not get it all on camera too well, so I turned it sideways there. But now it's on the door, and you can see the definition. But it did turn out exactly like I wanted. Hey, y'all. It's Kay. For today's project, I'm going to be making over this birdcage that I got at the thrift store. The tag shows that it came from the Dollar General and was $6. At the thrift store it was $2.99, but it was half price day, so I got it for $1.50. I'm going to be using some white Waverly chalk paint. I'm also going to be using these flowers that I got from the thrift store. They're not in too bad of shape. We won't need all of them. I will just use probably the peonies, which are not normally my flower, but you know what? They're quite beautiful. The first thing I'm going to do is deconstruct this project by taking out all of these Christmas picks. I'm sure I can probably reuse these in the future in another project. I'm going to keep the foam at the bottom. That was a lucky find. But the first thing I'm going to do is paint this bird cage. I prefer white bird cages. And I'm going to leave a little of the black showing, just give it a chippy look like it's been around for a while. But we'll just clean this up. And now I'm going to take this bow off that is on these flowers in spirit of the project, which is using thrift store items. I'm going to reuse this bow. But I quickly noticed that I can't use it the way it is. So I take out my straightener, my hair straightener, and I'm going to straighten the ribbon. This actually worked perfectly so I can reuse it. 
This ribbon does have wire in it, but I just went carefully and it worked just fine. Now I'm taking this piece of ribbon left over from another project, this light pink organza, and I'm going to place one on top of the other and then twist it into a bow using my bow dabra to hold my ribbon. I'll just put an extra loop right in the center, use some floral wire and twist it around. And of course, every bow needs a lot of fluffing. Cut off those ends, dovetail, angle cut, till I eventually get it the way I like it. Now let's put in our flowers. I'm cutting these peonies first, and I'm going to put three of them, well, that's all I have, right down into the bottom of the cage. And then I'll take these little white flowers as well. I'm not sure what they're called, but I'm going to place them between the flowers. And then this white floral I'm going to reuse and I'll just place it in the bird cage as well. And now let's place on our bow right at the top. I'll just twist that down, fluff it a little more, and that's our finished piece. It's kind of a simple project, but I love it, y'all. Thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you are new here, we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the little button below. Make sure you ring the bell so you will be notified every time we upload new content. We upload new videos each week offering a variety of DIYs, trash to treasure projects, and tips, tricks, and hacks. We just know you'll find something you like with Crafting Cousins. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use one of these little Dollar Tree terracotta pots. These are the larger ones that come two to a pack. A terracotta saucer, you only get one of these. One of these little birds. Some florals, I haven't decided which ones yet. Some chalk paint, I'll be using ballet slipper pink and white. My glue gun and some glue sticks. And some tools from my work caddy. So the first thing I'm going to do is paint my little pot and my saucer. I'm going to be using this chalk paint in the color Ballet Slipper Pink, and I will be painting all of it. I'm going to paint the inside and the outside, the top and the bottom of the saucer. I do see that little crack in my pot. Um, the other one didn't have one of those cracks, but I already used it in another project, and it doesn't really matter on this one because the saucer is going to cover it up anyway. This paint dries really fast on this terracotta. It kind of soaks it up, and that's a good thing when you need your project in a hurry. <laughs> and I did, again, paint the inside of this pot. It will be sitting upside down, and you won't see it, but I have a thing about my projects being finished, so I want to make sure that if someone picks it up, it looks good on the inside as well. Now we are just going to attach our pot to our saucer with a little bit of hot glue right there in the middle at the bottom. Now I'm going to take some of my white Waverly chalk paint and this chunky brush that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to do some heavy distressing on it. I'm using this white to kind of soften out my pink and make it where it doesn't look quite so perfect. I did use a heavy hand on this and then I decided that I wanted some of that terracotta to pop out as well so I grabbed a piece of sandpaper yep I finally <laughs> got some more of it and I just went over the edges and showed a little bit of my terracotta now we are going to decorate our bird bath I want to use this little bird I love this pink and blue one and I'm going to use some of this pretty little baby's breath and these little pink flowers. Our Dollar Tree has really stepped up their game when it comes to their florals this year. And they are just so pretty and soft. I loved how the baby's breath and the flowers looked with this tiny little bird. I just kept cutting pieces off of it and gluing them on and just kind of surrounding my bird and giving her a nice little perch to sit on. Once I finished with the top, I moved on to the bottom. I want to decorate it too. And I used that same baby's breath and those little pink flowers. And I just cut them off and I kept gluing them on. Now, I didn't really have a rhyme or reason for this. I just kind of clipped pieces and glued them where I thought it needed something. And I was really happy with how it all came together using just these small pieces. Thank you. 
Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use an old piece of board, some mouse traps from the Dollar Tree, wording that I printed out, some lace and pearls from my stash, carbon paper, a sawtooth hanger, chalk paint, my glue gun and some glue sticks, and some tools from my work caddy. So the first thing I wanted to do was take these mouse traps apart. I do want that clamp, but I didn't want the rest of this to be on here. So I just took a pair of needle nose pliers and was able to easily pry these out. Now we're going to paint our board. I'm using Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and just giving them a really good coat of paint on the front, the back, and all the sides. I'm going to be using this for a note holder in my new office. I finally got my office craft room moved downstairs and I'm so excited, but I want some pretty pieces that are also functional that I can use to do different things. And I thought that this piece would be great to hold things that I need to remember. Now, I'm using a piece of board that I got from my sister. She has some friends who do woodworking and they're always giving her scraps and she's been kind enough to share with me. But if you don't have any old wood, you can get pieces like this from Hobby Lobby. They have it in the back with the unfinished wood pieces and they're really inexpensive. Now we're going to paint our little mouse traps. I'm going to be using the Waverly chalk paint in the color Ballet Slipper Pink, and I give the top and the sides a really good coat of paint. I didn't worry about painting the back of these because we're going to attach these to the board and you're not going to be able to see it, but I did want good coverage on the front and the sides. And I also went ahead and painted that little spring. It was a dark gray color and I didn't really like it but I love the rose gold color of the clamp, so I left it, but I did go over that little gray piece that holds that clamp down. I just used the edge of my brush and was able to cover that, and if you get any on your clamp, it wipes off real easily. It took about a coat and a half to cover the wording on this, but it took about two coats for those little springs. Now that my board is dry, I'm going to do a little bit of light distressing on this. So I grab my pencil and kind of run it along the edge and then I smear it in with my finger. I didn't want real heavy distressing on this piece, um, but I did want to kind of soften out those edges and give them a little bit of definition. Now we had one of our sweet subscribers who mentioned that she was worried I was going to get lead poisoning from doing this method. So I actually called my doctor, he is a good friend of mine, and I asked him about it and he said that no more than I'm doing, he doesn't worry about me getting lead poisoning. Um, I just do this just a little bit on my projects and then as soon as I'm through, I go and wash my hands. So he doesn't think I have anything to worry about, but thank you so much for mentioning it. Now we're going to transfer our wording onto our project. I'm going to be using one of my favorite methods of doing that, which is using carbon paper. I get my carbon paper from Office Depot, but you can also get it from Amazon. And I just put it down on my project where I want it to go, and then I trace over it and it transfers the wording onto my project. Once that is done, I'm going to use these Master's Touch graphic illustration markers and fill in the wording. I love these markers. I started using them when I used to do mixed media. I get them from Hobby Lobby and they're a little pricey. It's $12.99 a pack for five of these, but they put them on sale about every other week for 50% off and that's when I pick them up. They last a long time and they have such a great flow to them because they're made for illustration work. They have five different tips. They start off really fine and they go up to this brush tip. And I love using this brush tip on these thicker letters. It really makes it look like they were painted on. 
I'm going to go ahead and put my hanger on my board because I knew once I got the stuff on the front, it wasn't going to be easy to do. So I figured out where the center was and I marked where my little nails were going to go. And then I took it outside and nailed these on because nailing on this little table does not work out very well at all. Now we're going to make some shabby flowers. I take some flat lace and roll it up and cut some little strips. Then I take one of my strips and I wrap it around a couple of my fingers. Now how big your flowers are depends on how big the surface is that you're wrapping them on. Then I take a piece of twine, wrap it around the center really tight and tie it into a knot. I cut open those ends with my scissors, just kind of open that up and then I cut slits into both sides. Now you're just going to fluff it up, pull it around, turn it into like a circle, make it look more like a flower, trim those edges to make it round, and then once I get it where it looks kind of round and like a flower, I put my center on. For these, I'm going to be using these little faux pearls. Um, my mother-in-law had tons of these, I love them. And I just cut three from the strand and glue them right there in the center. And I think that gives me a pretty little flower. Now we're gonna do this one more time. We wrap it around our fingers about five or six times, slip it off and tie a piece of twine right into the center as tight as you can get it. I double knot mine. Then we open up those ends with our scissors, cut some slits into it. It doesn't matter how neat they are, the messier the better, and then just fluff it out. Pull it around, twist it, do everything you have to to turn it into a nice circle. Then I trim it up. I take three of those little pearls and clip them off the string and glue them right down into the center and that gives me a pretty shabby flower. Now we're just going to attach our little flowers onto our mask traps by using a little dot of glue right in the center. I put my mouse traps down on my board and figure out where they're gonna lay. And then I take some more of those pearls that my mother-in-law had and I kind of twist them around my board. I want to give them a really whimsical edge that looks kind of romantic. I just love that look. And then I attach them to my board using a little bit of hot glue. Now I started off putting glue on each individual pearl and I found out quickly that that was going to take forever. So I started just putting down a bead of glue and then I would stick my little pearls right down into them. I did purposely twist them around and make them look all crooked just to kind of give them a romantic look. Now we are going to attach our mouse traps to our board using a combination of my super glue wood glue and my hot glue. The wood glue is going to give these a permanent hold, but the hot glue will hold it on there until that wood glue has time to set. The last thing I did was take this little paper flower that I had and use a little bit of hot glue and glue it right into the middle of those pearls. And there's my new memo board. I really love how this piece turned out. I think that it is so pretty and so feminine and I don't even care that those are mouse traps on there. Hey y'all, this is Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using one of these heart-shaped wreath forms that I got at the Dollar Tree. This project is going to be very simple and very short. I'm going to be using some of this faux lamb's ear that I got at Hobby Lobby. I got it when it was 50% off in the wedding session. I'm going to be using some two and a half inch floral ribbon. It comes pretty inexpensive because it's kind of a plastic texture. Also some two and a half inch wired ribbon. This came from Hobby Lobby and it has cute roses on it. Some pink roses that I got at Walmart in one big bunch. Some white florals that I found in my stash. If you had white baby's breath, that would work as well. And finally, my wire cutter, some floral wire, 
and my hot glue gun. So the first thing I'm going to do is take that floral ribbon and I just attach it around the back with some hot glue and then I'm going to wrap this thing completely in the pink floral ribbon. This does take a little bit of time and you don't want to overlap it too much because it makes it more difficult to wire everything on later. The next thing I'm going to do is wire on my lamb's ear and I'm going to cut pieces of my floral wire that are about 8 to 10 inches long just so I have some extra room and I take it and stick it through this ribbon and then wire it in the back and I also use hot glue on top of it just to make sure everything is nice secure but the main thing is to wrap it around that center post of the wire wreath form and everywhere it was wired in the back where I twisted it I added hot glue I'm going to use my two inch ribbon to make a bow for this piece. I'm going to do four inch loops at first, two of them on each side. You just come in each time and twist it between the pegs so that your right side is always out. And then I'm coming in and making a loop on each side that is three inches. And finally, I'll make an extra loop to go right there in the middle. And once I cut off my tail, I'm going to use a chenille stem and bring it under that extra loop in the middle, twist it around to the back, and then trim up my ends, dovetail them, and fluff my bow. And with that, that bow is done. I will use my chenille stem and just wrap it right around this wire form, twist it in the back, then twist it into a loop so that I can hang it later. Secure it with hot glue and adjust the ends of our bow. I use my wire cutters to cut off the ends of my florals and then I just shove them down through the ribbon. That's why I sort of cut the ends at an angle. I did keep all that baby's breath that was on there. And then I glue them at the front underneath the bloom and then I also glue them to the back just to make sure everything is nice and secure because I'm not wiring these on. I'm going to put a total of five roses on this piece one in the center of the bottom, one to each side of the bow, and then the last two in between those. Then for any bare areas, I'm going to come back with my white extra floral, and I'm going to place those in on each side. And then I also spread out my leaves and kind of glued them around things to the ribbon, just to make sure everything was nice and full. If you have extra florals, this is a good time to add those in as well. It's Kay. I'm going to be using leftover flowers from my stash, those larger roses I showed you a second ago, this rose bunch that I got at the Dollar Tree that has pale pink and medium pink, these white tulips that I got at Michael's last year. I've used a few already, but that's okay. These are going to be good filler. I'm also going to use this plant that I got from Hobby Lobby when it was 50% off. The green part looks a lot like eucalyptus. These pale pink flowers are actually called ranunculus, and I'm not sure if I got them at Walmart or Hobby Lobby last year. This white flower I actually got at Walmart. I'm just pulling all of the pink and white things I had in my stash. I'm also going to be using one of these three inch styrofoam balls. I got these at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to use some one and a half inch wired ribbon, but you can use whatever ribbon suits your color but also you don't have to have wired ribbon you can just use grow grain ribbon it really doesn't matter the first thing i'm going to do is take out one of my styrofoam balls and then i'm just going to measure out a piece of this ribbon that's going to be on the top part of my flower ball i didn't really measure i just cut the one i thought i liked the best and the next thing I want to do is attach that ribbon down to the styrofoam ball. I'm just going to use a little hot glue and attach it on one end. And then I'll take two straight pins and place them right down through the ribbon and the styrofoam ball to keep it in place. Then to prepare my florals, I'm going to push the leaf towards the bloom each time. And then I started out cutting my stems at about four inches. Don't do that. I came back later and I cut them all at three inches. Having a good pair of wire cutters makes this job really easy, but of course y'all, mine are packed away somewhere and I still can't find them, so I'm using my jewelry cutters. 
Start with your largest flowers first and then start poking them into your styrofoam ball. Here you can see that I'm pushing it in and leaving about three inches showing. I do come back later and push them down y'all and just leave two inches showing. Here's the rule of thumb. The more of the stem that you leave outside the styrofoam ball, well, the larger your ball is going to end up being. But also, that means you're going to have to have a lot more flowers. And that's when I got smarter and pushed them in to about two inches into the leaving for outside the ball. Then I just kind of work my way around the ball symmetrically, placing them on opposite sides as I go around. I put all of my roses in first, and then I move on to the next flower. And I do use my hot glue, of course, to secure it each time into the styrofoam ball. This is a perfect time to use your glue pot or your glue skillet if you have one. And y'all know I do have one. It just hasn't appeared at the new house yet. Now I'm placing on the white tulips. I'm just rotating around the ball because you want to keep it as even as possible in your spacing of your different florals. And now I'm just going to cut off all of the ranunculus flowers, and I do use this entire bunch. And then I'll come back and start putting them into the ball again, leaving about two inches of the stem showing. For this particular plant, I'm going to push two of the little sections down to the end of my stalk and then cut it off. And then I come back later and I'll push two up and I'll just secure them at the top with some hot glue because I do end up using this entire floral pick. I love this little plant, y'all. It provides good filler and you have a different green color in there. It gives more depth and dimension and just makes for a beautiful floral piece. At least I think so. And once I got all of this flower in, then I'm going to come in and attach the rest of the ribbon down to the ball at this point. I just cut it off a little bit once I figured out what height I wanted it to be. And I just glue it kind of down to the ribbon and to the ball at the same time. And the last flower I'm going to put in are these white stalks. Not sure what they're called, but they give a lot of texture and a nice look to our little floral ball. I think this will be cute hanging in a doorway or hanging on a hook in your front yard next to your front door. And I've also seen flower girls carry them at weddings. Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this project, I'm going to be doing something a little boho chic, maybe slash a little shabby chic. We'll see how it turns out. But first of all, I'm going to use this stick that I went out into my yard and I picked up. A tree fell last week and I thought I should salvage something from that tree. I'm going to be using some twine. I got this at Hobby Lobby. It's not the real thin kind, it's just a little bit thicker. I'm going to be using three random flowers that I pulled from my stash. These are some that got separated from their bunches. You could use whatever color that you like. Of course, I'm using pink. I'm also going to be using this ivy that I found in my stash as well. And the only other thing I'm going to use is my hot glue gun. I'm keeping this project very simple. I kind of hate it, but I had to remove all of the bark from this limb because this tree was quite dead and it was falling off anyway. So it wasn't difficult. You may want to leave your bark on for character. I first used a little hot glue and secured the leaves to the back of all of the flowers. And then I'm going to come in and cut off the extra stem. Honestly, if you had long stems, you could use those and help attach it to this wooden stick. But I'm just going to put a little hot glue on back. And then I also use the leaves to kind of curl around the stick a little bit. And that gives it a little more space for the glue to hold on to the flower and to the stick. I hope that makes sense. I put the rows up kind of higher and then the dahlias towards the bottom. These were just random flowers I had and I thought well, that would be cool to use it in a piece and use up all of my stash. Now I'm just going to take the ivy that I had and I'm going to fold it in half and just cut it with my scissors. And I'm going to come back and glue it to the right and the left of our piece. I think using these larger flowers, you get a lot more for your money and you cover up a lot of space on your piece. And you can always add more or less just to your personal taste. And now I'm going to take my rope and I first cut it in five foot pieces and I cut three of those and I'm going to secure the end 
with some tape and I'm going to tape it down to my mat. And then I'm just going to do a very simple braid by crossing it over from right to left, right to left. To secure it to my piece, I'm just going to tie simple knots at the end and use hot glue to secure it, but I'm going to leave at least six inches hanging down. And I told you previously that I cut my twine at 60 inches. You do not have to do that. 48 inches is sufficient because it only shrunk my rope about six inches by braiding it. Now I'm going in and I'm going to loosen all of the twine at the bottom and just give it that raveled look, or I should say unraveled look. And I just think it gave the piece a lot more character. You could always skip this step and just leave the pieces of rope hanging down, but by unraveling it, it gave me four pieces to each one of my pieces of rope. So 12 pieces all together hanging down. And I just like that unraveled look. And there's our finished piece close up. And there it is hanging on my wall. Hey y'all, it's Kay. Today's challenge is to create a sign from the Dollar Tree signs and also to use something pink. Well, I'm going to combine them in both by using this Let It Snow snowman sign from the Dollar Tree. I found this sign on Pinterest and I want to try and recreate it on my own. So I printed it off as best I could on my computer from a screenshot. I used two sheets of paper and just spliced it there in the middle because the sign was fairly long. I'm going to use some chalk paint in white and plaster and fern and moss. And I will also be using some black chalk paint and this ballet slipper pink. And I will need a few tools. I'm going to use some paint brushes, a pencil, and some tracing paper as well. The first thing I'm going to do is start deconstructing this sign. I'm going to take off the let it snow part. We can always use that on another project. And then I'm going to draw a line on the back about two and a half inches down. I found that my pattern needed some of the length taken off. And then I just score it with this box cutter several times. And then I discover I need to go ahead and take off the backing on the front. So I just go in and remove all of that paper that's on the front. I'm just using my Cricut tools and it takes just a few minutes, but it's not hard at all. And finally, I go back and score it again and it just comes right off. And now I'm going to take my Waverly white chalk paint and I'm going to give the sign a basic coat using my chippy brush and just putting it on quickly. And now let's come in with our plaster chalk paint and give the board a good coating using short even brush strokes. I want this part to look as finished as possible and I did end up only having to put one coat of plaster it turned out great, actually. The first thing I'm going to do is take some of this painter's tape and I'm going to lay down my pattern here, if you will, and I'm going to tape it along this one edge. And then I'm going to put in my carbon paper and go around my design and trace it with my pencil. I just give a rough outline of the sketch. Guys, I am by no means an artist. That's why I'm doing the old paint by number. I just make sure that the tracing papers work in there and then come back and quickly fill it in. I did speed it up some for the video, but I went fairly quickly and just quickly sketched it in. And for the ornament at the bottom, it wasn't exactly centered the way my drawing was, so I took it off, re-centered it, and come in and trace the lines and the top of my ornament. 
I start tracing in the actual ornament, but then I decide that's too much trouble. Let's just cut the thing out and draw around it. So that's what I did. And now I'm using my permanent marker in black, and I'm going to just outline quickly all of these branches. I hate to come in with dark paint on a white background all at one time, so it helps me to go in and draw in the black first. And then I trace out the cap of my ornament. I'm mixing some white chalk paint into this black chalk paint. And guys, I know most paintings are in acrylic. I just wanted to do it this way. And I'm coming in with a really tiny brush. And this color came out kind of a charcoal gray, although it looks very black on camera. But I'm just roughly filling in my branches. Branches are rough, so you don't have to be too precise when you're drawing it in. And then I decide I'll go ahead and paint that pink on my ornament while the top part is drying. And at first I just layer in the pink color. And now I'm going back with some watered down Waverly White chalk paint. And I'm applying it to the top of that charcoal gray and smudging it with my fingers and giving it more dimension. I really did let the black dry, but it still lifts up enough and it just gives this nice effect, almost like snow, but not quite. But we don't want our branches to be one dimensional and just one color. So I just keep shading and rubbing in the color. If I make a mistake, well, I just cover it back up with some plaster. And then I put a little shading on our ornament at the bottom, wipe some of it off, add some more in. I just keep working with it till I get it like I want it. And go back and finish those branches at the top that I didn't. Add a little more to the side. Kind of like a Bob Ross painting. And now I'm taking the color fern and putting it in first. I'm using a chisel, chiseled brush and I'm going to go in and just make needles for my branches. I just keep playing with it and I eventually get it the way I want it. Like I said, if you make a mistake, just paint over it and start again. This is the darker of the two greens that I have. And then I'm going to come in with some silver that I found in my stash, and I'm going to cover in the little part on top of the ornament with this silver paint. And now I'm going in with my moss green, and I'm just kind of going in between where I've already painted in fern. There is no rhyme or reason. Again, I'm using a chiseled brush, and I'm just kind of spouncing it on. And that's kind of all there is to this project. But I love how it turned out. I'm going to place it in my studio and enjoy it through the holidays. Merry Christmas, y'all. Do you like to create with paper? Create beautiful journals, cards, embellishments, and interactive mini albums? Well, you should go and check out our channel, Crafting Cousins Create. There, we slow down the videos and give you step-by-step -step instructions that make it easy for everyone from the beginning to the advanced crafter to follow along. There will be a link to that channel in the description box below. We hope that you'll come over and join us. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use two pieces of scrap wood that I got out of my husband's pile. One is one by six and it's about 18 inches long and the other one is one by three and it's five and a half inches long. A mason jar, some Waverly chalk paint in white and ballet slipper pink, a knob that I got from Hobby Lobby, 
some wood glue from the Dollar Tree, a sawtooth hanger, some hydrangeas from the Dollar Tree, some twine, some Model Magic Air Dry Clay and a silicone mold. I got this from Amazon, my drill, and some paint brushes. The first thing we're gonna do is take some of our air dry clay and our little mold, and we're just going to pinch off little pieces. You really don't want to take a big piece, and I press it down into my mold. Now, I do try to make sure that I get it so that it's not overhanging on the edges, because if you do that, you have to clean it up at the end, and I found it's just easier to work with it as I'm putting it in here so that it fits in there. Now, I get these little molds from, well, I got some of them from Hobby Lobby, but I actually got this one from Amazon, and it's really for fondant, but I love using it to mold my clay. Once I get everything in here, I put it in my air fryer at 190 degrees for 10 minutes. Now we're going to take our boards and give them a good coat of paint. For this, I am using my Waverly white chalk paint. And for my boards, it only took one coat. I got some really good coverage on here. After I painted the front and the back and the ends of my long board, I painted my short board and set them aside to dry. Now I'm going to take that jar and I'm gonna use my Waverly Ballet Slipper Pink and I'm going to paint it all over. Now this took about a coat and a half. After one coat, you could still see some bare areas, so I just went in and touched it up, but that was really all it took. Now that our paint is dry, I'm going to use my um, super glue wood glue and put a generous amount of that on the back of our short piece, and then I'm gonna use some hot glue for the um, fast hold, and then just flip this over and press it down. And now we're going to find the center of our board in the back and mark it. And then I'm just gonna take my sawtooth hanger and put it centered up. And I used my little um, pokey tool that I got from the Dollar Tree to make a starter hole with this. And then just use my little screwdriver to put my screws in and we have a hanger. Now I flipped it over and I'm finding the center of that small board that we put on there. And then I use my drill to drill a hole in there. I put a little bit of hot glue in there and stick my knob down in there. Now my knob didn't go all the way through so I couldn't screw it on, but this hot glue held it perfectly. Now I'm going to take a piece of sandpaper and I just go around the edges of this piece and give it some distressing. Now this is totally, you know, personal preference. Take off as much as you like. If you don't want to take any off, you don't have to. I just really like this. I think it makes it look old and aged and I took quite a bit off of mine. Now I'm gonna take that clay piece that we made and I'm gonna use some that wood glue and some of my hot glue and then just press it right there into the center. Now the ends of this were really fragile so they broke off whenever I was taking it out of the mold, but that's okay. I used a little bit of my hot glue and just kind of pieced them back on there. And once you paint it, you can't even tell it. Now we're gonna use some of our ballet slipper pink and a stiff brush and just kind of go over the top of this and highlight it. Now we're gonna use our sandpaper and just rough up our glass a little bit, bring out some of the detail on there and just, you know, give it that old look. To make a hanger for this, I put a little bit of hot glue in those little grooves and stick my twine down into it. Then I take my board and figure out how long I want my jar to hang down. And I use a little hot glue on the other side and stick the, high, the twine in there. Now we are just going to wrap it around inside that groove several times. I, I think it was probably five or six times. And then I use a little bit of hot glue to secure the end and I trim it off. Now I'm gonna use some of those hydrangeas. I cut them away from the main branch and I just stick them down in there and we will hang it on our knob and our project is finished. Hey y'all, it's Trish. 
For this project, we're going to use two embroidery hoops that I got from Hobby Lobby. One is four inch and one is five inch. A couple of tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree, some miniature roses from Hobby Lobby, some crystal beads from Michaels, some thin ribbon from my stash, a furniture repair marker from Dollar Tree, some wood glue, my glue gun and some glue sticks, and some tools from my work caddy. So the first thing I did was take my hoops apart. You're only going to need the inside hoop and I grabbed a couple of my tumbling tower blocks. Now I'm going to use one of my furniture repair markers that I get from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to stain all of my pieces all over. You will be able to see this so you want to make sure that it's all the same color. Now you could leave this the natural color but I wanted it to match my furniture so I'm using this walnut furniture repair marker y'all know I love these I get them from the Dollar Tree they are so easy to use they don't make a mess they don't smell and they dry almost instantly they give you a nice rich color and they are perfect for these small projects Now we're going to glue our hoop onto our tumbling tower block. I use a little bit of wood glue for that permanent hole and a little bit of hot glue for that fast hold. If you will set it on there, it'll show you where it wants to sit and that will make it more sturdy. Now I'm going to use my jewelry pliers and take a couple of these crystal beads off and then I'm going to string my ribbon right through that little loop at the top and tie it in a knot. I hold it down to see how long I want it to hang into my hoop and then I trim that off and now we're going to put one little drop of glue into the inside of our hoop and attach our ribbon to it wrap it around and put another little drop of glue and this is going to allow it to hang down into our hoop. We will do the other one the same way. Just tie our crystal bead onto the end of our ribbon, figure out how long we want it to hang, put a drop of glue in there, attach our ribbon, wrap it around and secure it with a little more glue. Now we're going to take some of these little miniature roses that I got from Hobby Lobby and we're going to decorate our hoops. I love these little roses y'all. They are so pretty and they really weren't that much. I got them when they were on 50% off so I paid like $3 for the whole bundle and I just cut some pieces off and if you notice I'm not gluing mine right into the bottom of my hoop. I kind of put it up at an angle. And I also did that with my beads. I didn't glue it right into the center. I kind of went off center and had it hanging down. I think this gives it more interest, but you can do yours any way you want to. When I clip these little flowers off, I do have to get them pretty close so that they will lay flat in my project. And sometimes the rows will start coming apart. So if you just use a little bit of hot glue in between those layers, it'll hold it back together. I just keep cutting and gluing. I'm not a florist. I tell y'all this all the time, but I just do what I like. Whenever I like how it looks, I let it go. One of these actually had a little rosebud on it and I decided to use that. And then I just added a few more flowers. And there's our finished project. Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using one of these napkins that I got in a package at TJ Maxx. I love these colors. Y'all, that pink and roses is right down my alley. I'm going to be using one of these wood rounds that's just a scrap piece of wood that my cousin gave me, some Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster, one small screw eye, some 3 8 inch pink ribbon. You could use whatever you have that suits your piece. And finally, some antiquing wax. The first thing I did was come in and use that plaster chalk paint and I painted the front and I painted all of the edges, gave it kind of a thick coat. I wanted to make sure that it didn't show through the raw wood in my napkin. 
And now I'm just using my screw eye and I'm going to attach it right to where I want the top of my piece to be. And then I go in with my scissors and cut out one of the set of roses from my napkin and I cut off the green at the edge and then I'm going to separate it into one ply. This napkin was three ply. I'm taking some plastic wrap and I'm going to place a piece right on top of my wood round and then I'm going to cut off my napkin kind of in a circular motion just removing those hard edges and then I'm going to place it down onto the saran wrap and center it on the wood piece. Then I'm going to take a piece of parchment paper, I got mine at the Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to place a piece right on top of my napkin. And then I'll come in with my iron at a medium to high heat and melt it down onto that plastic wrap. And this is just instead of using Mod Podge. It's quick, easy, and done. And now I'm just trimming off all of the excess plastic. And here's a tip for you, the brand name Saran Wrap does a better job than the Dollar Tree version. I just used what I had on hand. And now I'm going in and I'm going to use my antiquing wax on the corners, a little on the front, some across the whole piece. I'm just using a baby wipe to apply this and I'm just doing it to my personal taste and if I get too much I just wipe it off and start again. And then I'm going to tie a bow at the top using my grow green ribbon. You can use whatever you like. I actually had some velvet ribbon that I thought would look perfect for this piece and I couldn't find it. I think it would be perfect for an ornament or for a sign as well. Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using 10 of these one gallon paint sticks. I think I got mine at Lowe's. I'm going to use one of these metal words that I got in a pack at the Dollar Tree. One of these wooden hearts that I got at the Dollar Tree. It is in a package of eight. Some folk art acrylic paint in the color seashell pink. My furniture repair marker in the color oak. Some assorted florals. The pink ones are called ranunculus. One key that I got from Hobby Lobby when it was marked down 90% off. Some wired ribbon, two and a half inches wide, that I got at Hobby Lobby. Some flat back pearls. And finally, my Mod Podge and my hot glue gun. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my furniture repair marker that I bought at the Dollar Tree, by the way. They come in like a package of four or five, and they are wonderful. I'm going to use it, and I'm going to stain all the outside edges, just the narrow edges, on all ten of my paint streaks. The furniture repair markers are great for crafting because they have no odor and when you're finished they're already dry. I'm going to take two of my paint sticks and I'm going to draw a line right close to the middle right before it starts that gap. And I'll just draw a straight line so that I can cut those off. And I started scoring my sticks with a utility knife but that didn't work that well for me so I took them out to my garage and I cut them off with my small little table saw that I got from Harbor Freight. And now I'm lining them up with the gap up and then the gap down, the gap up and the gap down. Anyway, it just makes the holes a little smaller across when you do that. And I'll put this painter's tape right down the middle to hold it in place. And then of course I'm just going to secure it to my board and cover up all of those holes with my two extra paint sticks. Just using a little hot glue. Then I'm going to use a baby wipe and that seashell pink paint and I'm going to apply it down to the palette sign we've made. I'm going to keep it kind of a sheer coat where I can still see the wood through there or the wood grain I should say. I'm just using it more or less as a stain for this board. I like gold normally but for this piece I didn't because of the XOXO they just sort of clashed and I didn't have any silver paint except for this chalk paint so I'm just going in and using my chalk paint and I'm going to cover up that gold key. And then I'm taking my wooden heart and I'm just going to stain it with the same furniture repair marker that we were using on our paint sticks. The hardest part of this process was deciding what elements to use and when to stop decorating. The first thing I'm going to do I decided was to make a bow and I'm just going to take about a 24 inch piece, fold it in half, and then just fold my pieces over, scrunch it in the middle, and I'm just going to use a little piece of this ribbon to hold it in place. Then I'll just fluff up my bow and cut those ends kind of at a diagonal. 
I decided I would take this narrow ribbon, this organza pink, and tie it right into the top of my wood piece. And I'm going to use that later to attach it to the palette. I'm using hot glue and I'm attaching pearls. Kind of to be like my nails, putting everything together, but not really. You could paint them if you wanted to and have them a different color. And then I'm going to attach my key to this bottom right side on my support piece. Then I'm going to also attach my XO. XO, it is metal. I'm going to attach it right there to the top. This would be a time you might want to use your super glue fix all adhesive as well. I'm going to place my bow about halfway down on the piece towards the left side. Then I'm going to come in with my ranunculus. I'm going to cut off the stem, place the leaves, and then I'll be able to attach it down to the piece. And this one I'm going to place right there at the top of the center of that bow. And then I'm going to take my wooden piece that we stained, tie a knot in the top of it, and I'm going to use that to help me attach it right up under the bottom of my bow there in the middle and let it just sort of hang down. Then we'll add some more ranunculus, just placing them around the piece. And then I'm going to place some greenery there as well. And after you finish placing on the little greenery with the pink flowers on it, you could stop there, but I decided I would go on and add a few more ranunculus on the piece just to balance it out and add a little more dimension to it. I just sort of add things until I feel like my project is complete. Fill in with a little greenery and that's it. All we need now is a hanger and I'm just using a soda can top on the back. Hey y'all, this is Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using this tote bag that I got at the Dollar Tree. It is a really good quality and as soon as I saw it, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it. I'm going to be using this cute gingham check ribbon that I got at the Dollar Tree and also a couple of these buttons for my stash. I'm going to be making a pillow, so I'm going to stuff mine with this buffalo snow. It's just like Pelon. I got it at Christmas when it was probably 90% off. I'm also going to be using this sticky back Velcro that is made especially for fabric and a little bit of hot glue. So the first thing I'm going to do is go in and I take off the front straps. I just cut them even with the top. And then for my back straps, I cut those leaving four inches of room on each of the tabs. Then I'm just going to fold down my tabs in half and that gives me a nice finished edge at the bottom. You could do this part by sewing it by hand or you could also use fabric glue. Now I'm going in with my Velcro and I'm just cutting pieces for each of the sides and the middle that will fit. And then I just peel off the backing and stick it down between the sides of the bag. That's how I'm going to close my pillow. Yes, you could glue it shut, but the reason I'm not going to do that is I'm going to take the stuffing out at the end of the season, use it for something else, fold up my pillow, and then bring it back out next year. Now for some trim, I'm going in with my ribbon. I'm going to start in the middle of the front I am using Fabri-Tac for this part. I didn't want it to be stiff from hot glue. And then I just work my way around the bag. I'm using these clips from the Dollar Tree to hold it in place. And then once I have everything smoothed down, I let it dry, but I'm going to start working on the bow for the middle. I'm just making a simple shoestring bow. I cut off a piece of the ribbon and tied it around the center. And then I'm trimming up the edges using a little hot glue. I'm going to center it right there on the top. Trim up those ends. Now let's decorate our tabs. I'm going to put sticky back Velcro once again on the back of the tabs. We'll just remove the backing and stick that down. And then stick it down to the front of our pillow. I shouldn't say bag. And then I'm going to put a couple of buttons on the top of each of the tabs. And now it's time to stuff it and stuff it and stuff it. I did and I fluffed it and I finally got it pretty much like I wanted it. I really love how my pillow turned out. I think it screams spring. Plant smiles, grow laughter, harvest love. I 
I'm going to use this scrap piece of one by two, but if you know anything about lumber, you know it's really more like one and a half inches by half inch wide. I'm going to use two of these one gallon paint stirrers. I think I got them at Lowe's. I'm also going to be using three pieces of this two by two lumber that was some scraps and they are cut two inches long. I'm using three of these glass yogurt containers, the Wee Yogurt, and three of these votive candles. This is what I had in my stash, but you could also use those battery powered candles that you get at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to use several wired ribbons. They come in two and a half inch width and also one and a half inch width. I'm going to use these ranunculus that I got at Walmart. They're really a hot pink color. The camera doesn't do them justice. I'm also going to be using a little bit of this baby's breath that I got at Walmart as well. Some deco mesh. I have some snowball mesh in the natural color and then this pink color. They both came from Hobby Lobby and they're 10 inches wide. I'm also going to be using some chenille stems and some zip ties as well and my hot glue gun. And I forgot to tell you that I do need some wood glue to start this project. The scrap piece of lumber I have is 13 inches long, so I just indicated right there in the middle where that was, and then I'm going to put on some of this wood glue, and then I'm going to use just a little popsicle stick to spread it out evenly, kind of like making a sandwich. Then I'll come in with my two paint stirrer sticks, and I'm going to meet them there in the middle of my scrap piece of lumber. I'll just use some clamps on the side to hold it tight and then I'm going to let it dry for several hours. I'm going to be using my heavy duty stapler because it takes brads as well. But first I'm going to use a little wood glue and I'm going to secure the first two pieces to the right and left of that center piece. Then I'll turn it over on the back and that's when I'm going to use my heavy duty stapler with the brads and staple them down into the block. It just gives another way of holding it and it will just be a tighter fit. Then once I get those two on and they're totally secure, I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to place the third block centered in the middle. And again, I'm just going to use my wood glue. And these are the blocks that I will be setting down my wee glasses to hold my candles. Now that the wood glue is dry, it's time to start attaching chenille stems. I'm going to place six total onto the piece. I will place one at each end, halfway between the end and where the wood block starts, and then two on each of the sections that are between two of the wood blocks. Just giving them a good tight twist. The next thing I wanted to do is cut my mesh and I'm going to cut this 10 inch mesh into 10 inch pieces. I will need six of the natural color and also I will need six of the pink color. And y'all, the best way I have ever found to cut mesh is with a rotary cutter. I'm going to be using a really simple method for putting my mesh on. I'm just going to fold in those raw edges and kind of tuck them and then I will just gather it in the middle again raw edges in ruffle it in the middle and then cross them in an x i did figure this out in just a minute and i want to make sure it is in an x pattern and here i'm doing the same thing i'm going to put on the second set of my mesh and i'm slowing it down here a little bit so that you can see that i gathered it in the middle and then i will speed up this process because I'm just doing the same thing over and over until I finish my six set of chenille stems. And that's what it looks like so far. The next thing I'm going to do is cut some ribbon tails for my project. I chose four of the ribbons and I'm going to cut 10 inch pieces. I'm going to use two of this green with the white polka dot. Then I'm going to cut two in this hot pink color. This time I just cut 20 inches, folded it in half, and cut it again, and that's how I got my two pieces. But you only need two of each of the four colors. Now I'm going in with my third color, and I'm using this burlap ribbon in this hot pink. 
This came from Hobby Lobby. And this is some ribbon that actually came out at Christmas at Hobby Lobby. And I'm cutting two 10 inch pieces of that ribbon as well. And once I got all my ribbons cut, I folded them in half right sides together. And as soon as we have those cut, we're going to fold it in half at the bottom and cut a V cutting from the fold to the outside edge. And that's how we're going to dovetail all of the ends of the ribbon that we're going to use in this centerpiece. Now I'm going to start placing them into the centerpiece. I'm going to take the hot pink one and place this colorful one on top of it at an angle kind of at an X and then I place it down into my chenille stem and I give it a couple of hard twists. Here I'm going in with the next two colors and again I'm placing them on an X pattern, placing them into the chenille stems and then twisting them tight and I'm only going to do four in this manner. Two to the left and two to the right of the center and that's because I'm going to make some bows to go to the right and left of the center post. I'm going to be using my Easy Bow Maker to make my bows. I'm going to use, first of all, this burlap ribbon in this hot pink color, and I'm doing four inch loops on each side, and I'm doing seven inch tails. Now I'm coming in with this green color. I didn't have enough because I cut, you know, those ribbon tails by mistake. But that's okay, I just took the piece I had left, I cut it in half, and I'm going to use one on this bow and one on the next bow, and I just placed it right down into my Easy Bow Maker, and then I'm coming in with my black and white ribbon, I'm making my tails a little bit shorter than the last ones, and then also my loops a little bit shorter, and then I'm coming in with the pink color, and I'm matching what I did with the black and white ribbon. Then I'm going in with the Harlequin ribbon, which is also a black and white. And I'm making my loops just a little bit smaller and my tails just a little bit shorter. And then for my final piece, I'm going to do two loops on each side and I'm going to make those much shorter than the one below it. Coming in with a zip tie on the back here, turning it over. I'm going to place a chenille stem inside, pull my zip tie tight, cut off the excess and then turn it over, give it a good fluffing and dovetail the ends that are left. And then off camera, I'm going to make a second bow just like this bow. And here's the second one. I think they're pretty close. Now I'm going to come in with a pencil and I'm just going to twist down my chenille stems. You can see here on camera where I'm doing it at real time. And I'm not going to cut them off because I'm going to use those to help me attach all of my florals to my centerpiece. But before we put those on, I'm going to put our bows right to the right and the left of that centerpiece. I'm going to attach one of them to the side of the post. And then I will attach the second one kind of towards the bottom, just like I attached the ribbons and so forth in the mesh. The reason I'm doing this at the side is because I'm going to use that also to help me attach some of our floral pieces later. And here I'm just going in and I'm going to put down the votive to make sure that our candle and our candle holder is going to fit nicely. Now let's prepare our florals. What I'm going to do is push the leaves down toward the bloom. These do have lots of leaves and I'm going to keep all of that. Then I'm going to go in and I'm going to cut my stems and I'm going to keep them quite long. I end up using about six stems from this bush. As I place them into my centerpiece, I'm just going to use, again, those chenille stems and I'm going to wrap them around the stems and I just kind of hide them between the leaves. It really wasn't a problem at all. And if they're too long, I do come in, you'll see, and cut off the ends to make sure they fit correctly. And at the end, I come back with my hot glue and I will glue these to the chenille stems. I tell y'all all the time I'm not a florist. That's why I kind of repeat the same thing on one end that I do on the opposite end. So you can see how I place one at the end and then I come back with two on the next section. Symmetry is the easiest way to do it if you're not a florist. And y'all, I can't help but to touch those bows every time I move around because I keep squashing them. 
Now I'm putting in that baby's breath. I'm just putting it in where I thought the spots looked a little bare or I needed to cover up something. And again, doing the same thing on both ends. When I get to the middle part, I secure it with the chenille stem that was wrapped around that little wooden piece. And that worked like a charm. Of course, followed it up with hot glue. Here I am. I'm going to cut off one of the ones that was too long. And that's pretty much it for the florals in this project. Pretty simple. You could add as much as you want. Now I'm going to place down my votives just to see if my placement's going to work. Oh, I love how this is turning out. I'm going to secure them with the hot little hot glue. If it comes off later, I really don't mind. I can always reapply. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you liked, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We are also over on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest and would love it if you would click the link below and join us over there as well. If you enjoyed this episode, check out these videos for even more DIY inspiration. Bye, y'all.